All right, so we're going to be looking at factor using charting. I done a video on factor using decomposition. That's another method to factor complex trinomials. Uh, you're free to look at that. I'll uh, link in the top right hand corner. Um, charting does have its advantages, and as we go through these problems, uh, we can see when charting is actually easier than decomposition. So again, notice here uh, we have a complex trinomial. I can't factor this two out. It's not divisible by eleven. Uh, and 15, I can't factor it out, so I can't get a simple inside, so we have to factor this, and we're going to do this using charting. So using charting, um, draw yourself a table, and if you take a look here, you write down all the factors of 2. So we have 2 times 1 and the flip. Now that's it. It's a nearly easy question so far. Uh, that's 2 and 1 and 1 and 2. Likewise, you make yourself a chart, and you write down all the factors of 15. So you have 15 and 1. I've got 3 and 5. And now you don't have to put the flips. Like, I don't have to write a 5 and a 3 and a 1 and a 15. Uh, the reason for that is you've put the flip here, so it's not necessary to flip these numbers as well. Okay, so what do you do with these? Now that you have these, what you're looking for is looking for combinations of columns such that if I multiply the diagonal terms, multiply the diagonal terms, so 2 times 1 is 2, um, right? 2 times 1 is 2, and then 1 times 15 is 15, and I add these together, I get 17. It has to equal the B value. So in this case here, you can see it doesn't, so this combination doesn't work. Now we're gonna look at, okay, let's take the first column, and I'm gonna try the first column with the second column. So if I do the first column with the second column, five times two is 10, and then we'll do one times three is three. If I add these, they get 13, also no good. Okay, now I'm going to try the second column with the first column. So combining these two together, you get 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 15 is 30. Also no good. And lastly here, second column with second column. 1 times 5 is 5. 2 times 3 is 6. If I add 6 and 3, I do get 11. Once you find the combination that works here, the only thing you do is you read this from left to right. So by that, I mean it's going to be 1w plus 3. 1w plus 3 times 2w plus 5. 2w plus 5. And obviously, order doesn't matter. You can rewrite it as 2w plus 5 times w plus 3. Um, these are all equivalent. Okay, so this is a process for factored by charting. Obviously, you look at more of these, it uh, becomes much easier to do. Uh, the first time you see it can be a little confusing and seem like decomposition uh, would be much more efficient, but that is not always the case. Let's take a look at another. So again here, I have a complex trinomial. I can't factor that 6 out, so I'm going to write all the factors of 6 and their flips. So 6 times 1, 1 times 6, 3 times 2, 2 times 3. So 12 and 1, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. Now notice here, I want to make an observation. Um, these numbers are all positive, and these numbers are all positive. So when I multiply the diagonals and add them together, I'll never get a negative number. I need to get a negative 17. So what you do when you're uh, in that situation is just tack on minus signs on these. The product of these is still positive, but now you have the option of actually getting a combination that will come out to be negative 17. So as you go through these combinations, you try these all out, you'll find that this combination with this one is the one that works. So if you take a look here, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. If I add these, I get negative 17. So therefore, this is going to factor into what? Well, again, you read this from left to right. It's going to be 2h minus 3, 3h minus 4. And now we're factored. All right, so same idea here. Um, I have a complex trinomial, so I'm going to write down all the factors of 4 and their flip. So 4 and 1, 1 and 4, and 2 and 2. And likewise, all the numbers for 15. Now 15 and 1, 3 and 5. Now notice again, I have a minus sign here. So because of that minus sign, I'm going to tack on negatives here so that I can get a negative 23 out of this. So going through combinations here, if you look long enough, you're going to get these two that work here. Now notice here, 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. And then we have here 1 times negative 3 is negative 23, if I add that. So again, factoring this one, reading this from left to right, you're going to get 4q minus 3 times q minus 5. Okay, let's try another one. So again, looking here, you want to look to factor this first, right? So 
again, every time you get a quadratic, you should take a look at the quadratic and say, okay, is there a GCF? The previous three, there wasn't a GCF. On this one here, there is a GCF. I can factor five out of here. I'm left with 3a squared minus 13a plus four. I'm still left with a complex trinomial. I still have to do charting on this, but it's a lot smaller and easier to work with. So now I'm, go I'm gonna go ahead and do charting on this. So I'm gonna write down the factors of three and their flips. So three and one, one and three. And again, I'm in that situation, four and one, two and two, and I have to tack on these minus signs so I can get this negative 13 here. So going through combinations that work here, uh, you can see fairly quickly these two work, right? And you'll notice these two work because one times one is negative one, and three times negative four is negative 12. Adding these together, I get negative 13. So this is gonna be five times a minus four, three a minus one. And now we're fully factored. Okay, so this next question here, again, um, we have a complex trinomial. So I wanna go ahead and write down all the factors of 24. 24 and one, one and 24, two and 12, 12 and two. Uh, we've got here three and eight, eight and three. Uh, we also have six and four, four and six, and negative one and two. Notice these aren't flips of one another. These are unique combinations. So as you go through all these combinations, you'll find this combination here with this combination here uh, is the one that works. Now, it doesn't take, as you go through more of these, right, you don't have to, you can quickly do them in your head and see which ones are working, which ones aren't. You can make an educated guess as to where you think that answer is going to be here. Uh, here I saw, okay, I'm going to get a negative 16, and then obviously if you add that 3, you're going to get your minus 13 here that we're looking for. So this will factor into, if you read this from left to right, as 3s minus 2 times 8s plus 1. Okay, let's try one more. So same idea here. You always want to look for GCF. There's not a GCF on this. I can't factor with 21 or even reduce it. So we have to go ahead and do charting on this. So if I go ahead and do charting, I'm going to have to do 21 and 1, 1 and 21, 3 and 7, 7 and 3. And likewise, I need products of minus 30 here. Um, so you got minus 30 and 1, negative 1 and 30. Negative 2 and 15, negative 15 and 2, um, negative 3 and 10, negative 10 and 3, and then we've got negative 6 and 5, negative 5 and 6. And uh, now we want to start to look through, okay, what a co what's a combination that's going to get me a 17 here? So if you go through all these combinations here, you'll find 7 and 3 and negative 6 and 5 work. Um, again, this was a challenging one. There's a lot of different combinations that work for this one here, but this 7 and 5 is 35, and then 3 times negative 6 is negative 18. Adding those together, you do get 17. So once you find that combination, this will factor into uh, 7x minus 6 times 3x plus 5. Now, again, you might be saying, well, why would I use this? Why not use decomposition? Take note of how difficult decomposition would be. If I want to solve this question using decomposition, notice my product here would be 21 times negative 30, which would be negative 630, and the sum would be 17. So solving this using decomposition, you would have to think of two numbers that multiply to be negative 630 and add to be 17, um, which would be more difficult and more challenging than going through these combinations here. All right, uh, that concludes charting. Uh, take a look at it. Maybe rewatch the video, pause it, try the questions yourself. Take note, I'm going to post more practice questions with decomposition and charting kind of mixed together. We can kind of decide which one to use when or you, which one we'd prefer to use. All right. Thank you.